Let's shift focus to the other one in eight seeds playing in the Eastern Conference. So the Milwaukee Bucks were taking on the Orlando Magic today. Nick Vucevic had 35 and 14 as the Magic upset the Bucks 122 to 110. Terrence Ross added 18 for the Magic. Markel Fultz, former number one pick, 16.6 assists. Giannis, on the other hand, put up his usual 31 and 17 in the loss, but Chris Middleton, only 14 points on 412 shooting. George Hill had to come off the bench for 18. Guys, are we surprised to see that the Magic played this well enough to win against the Bucs by 12 points? Or are we more disappointed in the Bucs as we see a guy like Chris Middleton only 412 tonight? I mean, it's just not going to be enough as the second guy uh, for the Bucs. I mean, I'll say that um, the Magic is a good, it's a good win for the Magic. So this this is a one eight seed though, where I will say I do think that they caught them. You know, I think if you are to steal a game in like a series such as like a one eight, it would be the first game. You know, you two teams haven't played each other. The Magic played well. They do have some young talent that you know we're all aware of. Uh, Vucevic is always been a good big he's been a good big in this league for years now so I mean I can't say I'm necessarily surprised I mean this is a a bigger night from Vucevic than we'd expect but I can't say I'm surprised by him Giannis did what he normally does and Chris Middleton is you know he's never been that guy who's a superstar like like you know Chris Middleton is a solid two-way player but he's never been a superstar. And like, that was kind of the question with the Bucks when we had, you know, our conversation, like, you know, I don't think we're learning anything new about the Bucks. Like everybody kind of has the same stance on the Bucks. It's like, okay, they're a good regular season team. Come playoff time, they're going to fold. I'm feeling similar. Uh, this brings me back to last year when the Magic did that to the Raptors in game one up in Toronto. I mean, we all know how that turned out for the Raptors pretty well, um, championship. But, um, yeah, I mean, game one is always the one that you want to take, especially when you're in the bubble. There's no fans in Milwaukee. They have a pretty good home court advantage. So I feel like that played a role into it as well. Um, Busevich came out shooting. He was hitting threes. He was posting guys up. And uh, the Bucks were just down, like, the majority of the second half. Like, they couldn't – to run together and like like you said Giannis isn't really that great of a score he's not a Harden you know he's not like he's just not that type of player and like when you're not that type of guy you need a number two and Chris Milton really didn't step up he you know shied away again he did not look comfortable out there um I feel like they're definitely gonna have to make adjustments because the magic took a a uh, page out of the Raptors book and uh, started that little wall. I could see like four defenders with their eyes on Giannis when he picked up the ball. So, I mean, they're just going to have to shoot better. They all look out of sync. I feel like the the Bucks came out sleepwalking and uh, it really cost them today early in the day. So that's my take on it. So in my eyes, the Bucks just collapsed in this game, right? On the defensive end, you know, I, you know, again, Vucevic, great. He's a great player, right? Now, would we expect what he did today? No, right? We wouldn't. And same with Terrence Ross. Terrence Ross had a heck of a game, right? But you're telling me that the Bucks couldn't stop, you know, this Orlando Magic team who barely made the playoffs, and they were missing, you know, Aaron Gordon, who's a great weapon for them, they're getting, they're missing a lot of length, which in, in in fact is going to when they get those players back, that just helps them build that wall even better against uh, Giannis. Because look at that height that the Magic were missing today, a ton of height, a ton of length, and and so you know like like Carter mentioned, you know I think what this shows is you know how the Bucks can be stopped. And what what you do is you put that wall in front of Giannis, and then Giannis is relying on his shooters around him. Today, his shooters around him did not come to play in, in the way that they needed to. And, you know, if this continues throughout the playoffs, I, I can see them possibly even leading in the second round. Uh, and so they need to work on, you know, their shooting, they need to work on their shooting, and 
they need to figure out a way to get Giannis open and, you know, get around this wall that these teams are about to put up against us. I think what we really learn about the Bucks here is that in the playoffs, when it matters, when – when people are, are giving their all to defending Giannis, Chris Middleton just constantly shows us that he's not ready to be big in every single big game. I mean, we might we might get a game or two in this series where Chris Middleton will put up 20 to 30 points, but it's like, you know, when this is game one and, and, and late in the game, when shots need to be made, and I mean, I mean, jump shots need to be made. We know Giannis can't do that off the dribble. You see how important that is last year in the playoffs with Kawhi and, and just other teams in the bubble right now is some of that mid-range game and the Bucks don't have it in Giannis, so they need someone else to step up and do that. And it has to be Chris Middleton. He's supposed to be an all-star. He was an all-star. But but four of twelve shooting and fourteen points doesn't doesn't do enough for me. The other thing that I learned from the Bucks off of this is that it seems they can be beat on the interior. Uh, you know. Nick Vucevic putting up 35 points. I mean, he's he's 15 to 24. He knocked down five threes, but but he was posting up old fashioned basketball uh, in this game, and the Bucks couldn't defend it. And so that worries me. Let's say the Bucks get to the finals. They face a team. You know, let's say the Lakers get there. They've got bigs like, you know, who you need. You got to defend somebody. Even before that, you could meet up with the Raptors who many would argue their best players on the front line in Pascal Siakam. They've got other good bigs like Ibaka and Marcus Gasol, who can, who knows, who can get hot at any time. I mean, these are, these are, they're veteran players, but, but we know they have it in them. I'm, I'm worried about the Bucks for that defensively. So.